Okay, so today we're going to look at a common scenario. A CSR goes on site to see a customer who reports that the magenta is going crazy. The machine is not putting too much magenta. Now you've done your due diligence. You've ensured that it's not the environment. It's not too hot, too cold, too humid, too wet. The paper is okay as well. You've calibrated. You've talked about if the file was the same as the file before. The drums are okay. You've done everything you could. And yet the customer is adamant that this file needs to lower its magenta. So what do you do? Well, let's talk about that for a moment. So here you have a very nice picture, which is very neutral as well in the grays. And here you have a simulated output where you see what it looks like. But well, it's roughly where the customer would start calling usually. Now, at the bottom here, what you see is the Photoshop curve for this image. So a curve is simply a representation of how different channels are being used. So in the very light area, you have much more magenta than in the very dark area. And so that makes sense because overall the image is light and it's in the light areas that you have more magenta, zero, two, five, five. And so in this image, the curve is default. I converted this image to CMYK and took a screenshot for you here. Now in this image, what I did was change the input at 40 to 60. So I, I clicked on the point here and I dragged up the curve so that it would produce more magenta. As you see by the curve here, the higher the number, the more magenta in this case. So it looks more magenta-ish here. In Fiery, there's a lot of different ways you can play with color, you can change color. One of them is to change an output profile to simulate those Photoshop curves that designers would know about. And so let's look at how to do that. By the way, one of the nice features of Command Workstation 6.5 is that you can minimize the panes. So the left pane and the right pane can be minimized when you need space. So We'll uh, drag and drop the file, and we'll also drag and drop the one that we change the magenta, and we might as well do the before and after as well. Let's do a preview. So we can click here to see the before and after, or if it was a booklet, we'll also use a read or view at the bottom, which makes it flip through pages and pages. So we can see that it's quite obvious there's far too much magenta. So let's change that. Now again, there's quite a number of ways we can fix this file. Um, let's look at the way we talked about tweaking an ICC profile. So ICC profiles have an extension of .icc, and this is one. So if you see this kind of icon, in Windows, that's probably an ICC profile, .icc. There, a lookup table. Basically, if you want that color, do this in CMYK, this color, do that in CMYK, and so on, for many, many rows. And they are essentially data points that are mathematically abstracted to create a gamut, a range of colors that the printer can do on a given medium. Now. To access those ICC profiles, those lookups, those glasses that makes the color more accurate, we go to Device Center. So we can double click here, click here, or do Control Shift D as well. And in Device Center, we'll want to go to Profiles. And in here, we'll have many sections. So the output profiles are here. And each of them are tied to a calibration chip. Now, in this case, Let's presume we're going to use a silk text paper. So to change it, we're going to right click and click edit profile. In the end, we won't change this one specifically. We'll create a copy of it. And so this window comes up where we can edit the curves. So again, you can see how very familiar this looks once you are aware that curves in Photoshop do exist. They are quite similar. So again, we want to play with the magenta curve. So we're going to uncheck the visibility for the other curves. And if we want to undo what we did, we can see that we went from 40 to 60s. So we jacked it up. So in this case, to revert to normal, we're going to make it go the opposite way. We're going to mimic, make a mirror of that. So we're going to go from 60 to 40. So I'm going to click on my 60 and make it go down to 40. 
and that would be the opposite. I'm going to save that. I'll call it Magenta 60 to 40. Click close. So let's try it out. To try it out, we're going to change the output profile assigned to the job that has too much magenta and process and hold it. So this is the one that has far too much. And right now, if we process and hold this one with a default profile, we should see that it does have too much magenta. If we process and hold the one that has no change, we should see it looks fine. The one with too much magenta will go inside the properties and under the color tab, under output profile, we're going to assign the profile we just changed or edited the magenta 60 to 40. Click on OK. So now if I remove the raster and process and hold again, we should see that the magenta looks normal. So you see, it changed back to normal. Now we have this one here. That's the before and after all in one. So let's see what happens if we go in there and we apply the profile that we just changed. So the one that reduces magenta quite a lot. So I'll set it up the way it was created using the correct graph and do a process and hold. So you can see at this point that the first one seriously lacks magenta. So let's see another way how we can change those curves, how we can affect jobs. The one we just did, the profile affects the entire job. If you have a Versant 3100, an Iridesc Cutter Press, iGen, or maybe a 2100, um, or even a, a Prime Link or C60 or Versant 8180 that has the productivity pack that has image viewing, once the job is processed, and that's the requirement, you have to process the job first, you'll see an option for image viewer. So image viewer will tweak the curves per page. So we can apply different curves for different pages. As what we just did, changing the entire ICC profile was for the entire job. So that's how we can change that. So right now our page two looks good, but our page one lacks a little bit of magenta. You'll see that when I hover the mouse, you'll see the numbers changing on the right side. So I can see that here I am at 7% magenta. And on this one, I'm more like 11. On the face, the cheeks, I'm at 40. In this one, I'm at 24. So there's not enough magenta. If we want to change that, we certainly can. And only for this page here. Click on a dot and hit delete and hit delete on that one, then I can maybe increase it a little bit. So the curve point of 40 to 60 is the same thing we did previously. We had jacked it up like this. If I do this here, I should now see that I have a reasonable amount of magenta back into the image. It looks more natural. Right? But wait, you're probably thinking, wait, isn't there something called image viewer presets now in FS200 enough? And you'd be right. You would think that reduce magenta cast would do the trick, right? Well, it does work, but only in very light cases. Here's why. When the cast is extreme, this will work quite well. However, that preset is meant to reduce from 25 to 21. So it only reduces the highlights of magenta. So if you only have a little bit too much magenta, this is perfect. But when it's too heavy like us, that won't work.